Welcome to another figure week, hard surface week, organic week. Hey everyone, my name is Ahmed al -Douri. I'm a concept artist and former instructor at Art Center College of Design, Brainstorm, CCS, CGMA, and various other places. And I would like to introduce to you this digital painting course that I've created. But before we get into anything, I just want to thank you for the support you've all given me this whole time. And with the support of so many of you, I've been able to put together everything I know about painting into this digital painting course. You want to become a pro, illustrator, concept artist, or even just a hobbyist, but you don't have a clear map to get there. And that's where I come in. I spent the last six months compiling everything I know from my 20 years of art practice, and I've turned it all into a map. Starting with foundations such as rendering shapes, color theory, painting basic subjects, understanding brushwork, brush economy, all that fun stuff, deconstructing the skull, drawing it from every angle, all the way to master studies, stylized painting, and you'll find yourself at the end of the course doing a concept art project based on everything that we learn in the first 14 lessons. So how does it work? Well, you sign up, you watch the lectures, do the assignments, post them to the community page if you want, and treat it as a self-study, except for those of you who have signed up for the weekly meeting where I personally critique your work in a virtual classroom setting. I believe learning by repetition is super important. That's what I've sort of presented a lot in this course, and the assignments are tailored for that, as adapted from my time teaching at Art Center. And each of these lessons have step-by-step -step explanations in real time. If you've ever seen my videos, you know exactly how I teach. And this course is intended to be a substitute for a college-level course, but you don't have to pay the four or $5,000 per class, racking up maybe 200K in debt. With my custom design course, you'd be paying a fraction of that. And of course, I also have payment plan options if you don't want to pay for the whole thing at once. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, and welcome back to Drill Artcast. Uh, thanks again for dropping in for another episode. Um, I hope you guys, uh, wherever you are in the world, are all staying safe and, and uh, keeping on with some creative projects to keep your mind occupied. Um, <clears throat> another interview coming in with uh, an amazing guest, uh, someone again we've wanted to go on for a while, um, and just kind of persistence was key here. And I'm, you know, bothering him every two minutes just to make sure that <laughs> he was making sure I still wanted him on the podcast and he was still available. But we finally got him in here. Um, and I'm glad to say that uh, he's willing to talk about um, art and all things that he's done in the past. Um, here today, uh, can everybody please help me welcome along Esben Rasmussen. Hey Esben, how's it going bud? Hey man, how are you going? Yeah. Nice to be here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, for anybody who doesn't know you at this point, um, I'm sure there's there's a few of them out there, but for anybody who doesn't, uh, can you give a quick intro to who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, my name is... Uh... Espen Rasmussen. Uh, I also go under Espen Lash, and uh, I, uh, I've been working in the video game industry for almost ten years now as a little illustrator, and that's kind of like been my main thing, um, just creating worlds, characters, and um, and everything that's kind of connected to that, and telling stories and communicating emotions. Yeah. Um, so, so that's 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 me. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely your work already speaks for itself and the fact that, you know, it's kind of seen through far beyond all the, the, the corners of the art world. Like um, people have probably maybe never even known who you were specifically, but they'll see your art and go, oh yeah, like I know, I know where that's came from. So, um, so for you getting started in art, um, was this a traditional path you went on? Did you start with the simple stuff like going to school for it, then getting educated yourself? Did you self-learn, self-teach? What was your kind of path early on? Uh, the path was a little bit messy because, uh, being work, you know, working in the video game industry back then, it wasn't as clear of a job, uh, as it is now. Right. Um, so I was figuring it out while I was, uh, while I was kind of growing up too. So, um, I thought I was going to be a 3d modeler. Oh. So I, uh, yeah. So I started <laughs> going the 3d modeling route. Yep. And um, then halfway in, I found out that there's this uh, education called the Animation Workshop, and they had a computer graphic artist, which is a 3G generalist edu education. Cool. So I took that path, and then one year in, I found out that you can, uh, you know, you can do concept art and you can do illustration, and I decided to do uh, a 180 and then go that direction, and then mm. uh, let a bit of my grip go with. Uh, with the 3D modeling, and then um, I started to focus on that, and then uh, I went to Newcastle uh, in 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 the UK, uh, oh, wow. where I got my first internship, uh, and then I went and got my second internship in Berlin at Six More Vodka. Nice. And then that became the first job, mm -hmm. and then after that, I start I, I helped uh, start a, a, what's it called art studio in Copenhagen. Oh, cool. And then I was scooped up by uh, by Riot uh, after that, and yep. uh, yeah, so so it was it was a, it was a it was a ride. It was a ride. I could imagine. <laughs> so especially, I mean, especially in ten years, like it's you know, and even talking about Six More Vodka, I mean, one of the most prestigious art studios, art houses, I would say, in the whole of Europe. I mean, you know, the 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 caliber of stuff that comes out there is always mind blown like every artist who worked for them every time they post something i'm like my god like just how like how are you doing it um and uh, i know there's more places like that popping up now but like, yeah definitely it was funny to hear also that you went to newcastle for your first internship was that by any chance ubisoft or was that a smaller studio was that even maybe adam hawk that was adam hawk yeah i thought it was yeah yeah, yeah 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 one or the other but uh yeah adam hawk's all great bros as well met a couple of them uh a few times down at the industry workshop stuff and, and down in london um really great guys but yeah I mean, concept is, like you said, even back then, 10 years ago, um, I mean, when I left my, my job as an engineer in 2011, 2012, like, you know, ArtStation wasn't a thing. There was no online learning, nothing to say apart from maybe CG Hub or something. And uh, yeah, like, uh, it was funny now we talk about this kind of often on the podcast, but the first guy I emailed back in 2008, 2009 about concept art, Matt Gazer, uh, who was working in the US at the time, um, has now hired me for his company. So like 10 years span... <laughs> Yeah, me going through college university and like, how are you getting on? I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And then if it comes to me one day, like, oh, do you want a job? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, 3D is one of these things as well. I've kind of started with and and uh, I had this conversation the other day with Marek Maggi, shout out Marek. And uh, Marek was talking about, he was talking to one of his students about how concept art now is almost as difficult as like trying to land a role as an as an actor, like a mainly actor in a, like a, you know, a role in a film. Do you feel that, concept art's gotten to that point now do you think it's so saturated that it is an extremely hard dream to accomplish do you feel like the the way the whole industry shifted in the last 10 years that's maybe that it's it's one of the hardest jobs to get now i think it's definitely hard um i think it's let me say let me rephrase that i think it's harder than mm -hmm. it was when 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 we were starting out uh, i do right. think that it goes it goes with several factors it goes mm -hmm. also with that there are also more positions that have opened up since we started out mm -hmm. so that means that means that yes uh it's there it's harder to to lend the role but there's also more roles available so that kind yeah. of equals it out a little bit but i think that uh the main factor as I see it, is that competition has vastly grown, mm. which is that um, with the rise of the internet and everything, um, you can now hire people from anywhere, and mm. um, and the whole world is entering, you know, the arena. Yeah, uh, it was so before too, but right now it's it's way more than than before. So yep. you can you can compete with somebody who's sitting in Vietnam or anywhere in the world. 
Yeah. And uh, what really comes down to it is, uh, you know, how much uh, you've been able to push yourself, what you're able to to do with mm -hmm. with the art. So it's tricky. Um, yeah. It's also tricky because uh, the information is way more available. Like there are great, uh, you know, online courses and YouTube tutorials and mm. Instagrams that are sharing and, and you know knowledge and. Um, And since it's way more ready, uh, readily available, um, mm -hmm. it'll be easier for more people to pick up. So that Start. also, yeah. yeah, it also touches upon the competition of that. So I think, I think, um, I think that more than ever for new artists starting out in, or for artists wanting to break into the industry is mm -hmm. to, to bring something that is uniquely theirs or um, original to the table while also carrying a strong fundamental skills mm -hmm. um so so it's 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 a it's a hard nut to crack yeah it's not an easy path i can definitely tell you for the the few years i've been doing it i've definitely struggled and i was lucky matt came along when he did but yeah the competition even in 3d you know like the the, the programs even stuff like blender now being free um it, it just opens the gates to everybody you know who wants to pick up a a mouse and a keyboard and, and start learning this stuff so The same with uh, the 2D stuff, because, you know, back in the day, Wacom tablets were a fortune and like only a few people had them. And now it's one of these things where you can buy a basic one for like 40 bucks or something like, and as long as you have a, a reasonable computer, you can run Photoshop or, or other stuff. And now we were talking about the iPad before um, with Procreate being on the scene. I mean, that's a whole other just landscape of stuff that is now free and available. Um, and the fact that you can buy now Procreate, I think, I think for 10 bucks and for its entire lifetime, it's free updates and stuff. So, um And people doing professional work on it now. Like it wasn't, even when it started, I think 2016 was when I first started learning about it. But now I know people like Antonio Staparts who runs Artwad, you know, like he is working completely freelance on the iPad. Like he doesn't really touch Photoshop anymore. So it's a whole other game now um, of, of availability. So yeah. Are you doing anything iPad wise now? Are you still kind of mainly just Photoshop and Cintiqs no, and Wacoms? Or? I do. I've had still. I've been working with uh, Procreate, uh, Clip Studio Paint, and um, and also a bit of Nomad. So oh, wow. Um, so I've been I've been messing around with the iPad. It's kind of like my go to. You know, I, I snuggle up in the in bed, and <laughs> put on a show, <laughs> and then I sit, you know, and, yeah, sit and sit and sit and do a, a drawing or a sketch or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. or like some three D. Um, so well, it's good to get uh, away from the computer as well because you know yourself sitting at a desk for so many hours like it does nothing good for you really for your back for your posture for your your health um exactly. i could imagine was that the kind of setup you had you know like in most studios where you just mostly just at a desk photoshop wacom or, or whatever you know it was kind of the, the go-to yeah it was the yeah. go-to and then yeah. um uh when the ipad started to come in and procreate started to really improve the the you know that uh the, the how do you say it? drawing on a tablet right yeah and making, and making that natural um then things started to pick up and i started to do thumbnailing and sketching mm -hmm. and stuff like that um mm -hmm. and uh, i mainly still do that uh for, mm -hmm. the, for the creative process mm -hmm. um but it is possible to do a a, a a drawing and a painting on an ipad I, i just prefer at that point to switch over to a desktop sure. but I, you know i've been working with a desktop setup for a long time long so. time it's hard as it yeah i mean i think people who start on the ipad and that's their whole initial entry into the world it's easier for that than to be full-time as opposed to people who have like you said they're so comfortable in photoshop with the shortcuts with the keys with the layout it's uh it's just like a second home so yeah i mean would you say there was a big change from you when you went from somewhere like six more vodka to riot like even just the whole european side of it to you know america was there a big jump in attitude towards you know art directors and the way you produced art or was it kind of the same thing but a different place uh it was a vastly different place um <laughs> yeah um well i would say in six more it was a lot more strict it was a lot more clear direction in mm -hmm. the sense of, like you had no idea Or you had no, his, you had no, how do you say, doubt of mm -hmm. what you needed to do. Right. So it was very like efficient. It was very like clear communication in terms of like what you needed to do, mm -hmm. what was expected from you, mm -hmm. the quality and everything. Where mm -hmm. in LA, it was a lot more kind of like, 
uh, feeling based and kind of like it's less defined and, and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, and so that was a little hard to just switch over and learn mm -hmm. what that meant. And also sometimes what isn't being said in between the words. Right. Um, so, so it was definitely very different. Uh, I definitely felt a little bit like, uh, felt a little bit like, a, <laughs> how do you say, like a, a Kung Fu kit or something that <laughs> comes to a place where, where, because it's like at six more, it was so, it was highly efficient and we were working on there. We were, we were working really, uh, really well, I would say, like we mm. were being super optimized. Right. Um, and then when we then come or when I then come to LA, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's very different. So it's like all, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I've been like, you know, I've been standing and, and practicing on the hitting this tree and all of a sudden, you know, you get a piece of cardboard and you're like, Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so that was different. Um, and, uh, and I think, I think, uh, I missed a little bit of that sort of clear direction and uh, I guess mm. a little bit more very uh, hi hi hierarchy kind of right. based yeah. direction. I missed that in this in the early start for sure. Yeah. But yeah. there are benefits to both ways of running a company like that. Mm. It just depends on which one you want to you want to get and, mm. and you're mm. also giving some up. So it's yeah. a balance. I can imagine, yeah. I mean, I definitely have heard the same from people who have came from more like the battle-hardened uh, center of Europe towards, you know, Los Angeles and uh, the way the life is out there. I mean, um, I was lucky enough to get to visit in 2019. I went to Riot to to uh, catch one of my buddies there, and um, yeah, the whole place, Riot, it feels like a, a kind of university campus. Like the whole yeah. way it's laid out and the center court thing and the basketball shooting and the free lunches and the vending machines and you know definitely a way I would look at that stuff that says that's an American way of, of, of running an office um, as opposed to the guys at Six More Vodka or even the European stuff across here um, but yeah like I, I do understand what you're saying with that is that kind of part of the reason why you're back in Europe now is that kind of reason why you came back towards here like you felt like you wanted to do something differently artistically there's definitely part of that. Uh, there's many, there's many conversations back and forth with Riot and I in terms mm -hmm. of figuring out something and, and continue our working relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the main thing for me was really, it was really family. Um, right. So I wanted to be closer to my family. I wanted to, um, to start a family eventually mm -hmm. in, in Denmark. Um, yep. Yep. I could not see myself do that in LA. Yeah. Uh, LA is a great place and I had some amazing years there mm -hmm. and I considered, uh, you know, settling there or mm -hmm. in the nearby area, right. but I just, in the end, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see myself in the American system. Um, mm -hmm. so I, uh, I uprooted and went back to Denmark. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, um, you know, there's been still, I still, I'm finishing up a contract with Riot right now. Mm. And um, now I'm then moving on to my first sort of steps after almost, I think, six, seven years with, with Riot now. Wow. So yeah. um, I'm, 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 uh, I'm saying bye to, bye to Riot for now. <laughs> and maybe yeah. we'll see each other again in the future. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I have said yes to an art director role on an mm. unannounced uh, project uh, oh, cool. uh, for IO Interactive um, oh, very good. in Copenhagen. So Nice. Yeah, the guys at IO are awesome. Um, I've, I've definitely enjoyed their work uh, on the Hitman series for a long time. Like it's, I've been a big fan for, for many, many years. So yeah, it's a great studio. Um, so congrats on that. Well done. So you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> Inside scoop. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and and I didn't I didn't care much for uh, Hitman. Like Hitman was never my type of game. Right. Um, so um, so that was one of the requirements too. That if if it is then then it, it, it couldn't it couldn't be hitman because right. then, uh, I just wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be up for it but yeah uh, but I, i'm excited for this new adventure and, and to oh. see that what uh, what happens next yeah that's awesome man great congrats um yeah i mean like i think it's one of these things um you know when you look at america and how it's structured and the things i think when i grew up in the world of you know games america was the best and it was the place you looked to because you know the studios were there it's kind of where it launched um, although even funny enough, where like Japan played such a huge role for many years, like, you know, but then everybody kind of looked to the West, but, um, you know, Blizzard was early on the scene and EA and stuff like that. And 
it was very apparent, you know, that that was it was the place to go if you wanted to work in games. But I think now looking at the European studios, there is such a huge, huge, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't name them all, but there's so many studios across in the European uh, continent now. I mean, even the other day I was talking to my buddies from Massive in Malmo, and like, my God, <laughs> the stuff they're doing, their new studio, like, you know, the whole idea that they're now working on a star wars franchise like it's so crazy um you know and of course like here in the uk like even just you know 10 minutes down the road from me in edinburgh you know you've got uh rockstar north who who launched grand theft auto so i mean like people always talk about that and think that's made in america but it's over here so um you know and even talking to some of my buddies early on when they were working in red dead i mean there's such a culture in uh europe of making games and and uh, i think also it's the benefit stuff that i talk about now with my friends in la which is like healthcare schools systems yeah. like that it's stuff you think about like oh yeah if i'm going to have a family then yeah that maybe would be <laughs> slightly better over here so um yeah um because you're not the first writer i've talked to who's left recently and came back to the the motherland so um yeah it, it's definitely a thing i think people are, are kind of finding now is especially during the pandemic and a lot of people their priorities shifted because uh the world kind of went to ship so <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah and 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 i know and i guess as as shit and everything as the pandemic has been too there there has been good things i think that came with with mm -hmm. it and i think part of that was you know like being able to stop up mm -hmm. kind of look at your life and kind of like reassess and everything and be like okay where do i want to make some changes yep so and that, that was the big change for me was like okay yeah back to europe and it's i have not regretted it it's been amazing um yeah. Apart from the so weather, I mean, maybe. <laughs> actually, I think that's that's been the best part. Uh, oh, cool! It sounds weird, but mm -hmm. it was a conundrum that I did not expect. But which was having twenty five degrees sunshine pretty much every day doesn't sound too bad, and it yeah. is. It's not bad, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect um, that uh, time starts flowing together. Like it right. starts. It becomes kind of like Groundhog Day because you wake up, it's the same day. You wake up, it's right. the same day, and that's a year. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, and and I I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't have the seasons to remind me. I didn't have that that I wake up, it's sunshine. Oh, it's wonderful. You can always go out, which is wonderful when mm. you got the time. You can, yeah. but um. But if you have to sit and work from, you know, nine to six or nine to five anyways, you're mm -hmm. inside and you just look at the window outside <laughs> and it's, it's sunshine and you're like, I do yep. not want to sit here and paint, you know? Yeah. Um, so coming back to the gray and the rain, it's been amazing. Like yeah, yeah. you hear that in the background mm -hmm. and you can sit down in front of your screen and you'd be like, okay, yeah. let's, let's do this. There's people in America who put the rain sounds on their monitors because they won't actually hear <laughs> rain sounds yeah. like, be, and we've got it like literally outside. So, yeah, I know all too, all too good about that being in Scotland. We, we definitely have our fair share of bloody rain, but uh, I mean, like, yeah, it's one of these things. I think when you look at the beauty and the natural wonder of Europe, like in some of the places. I mean, even in Copenhagen, like in Denmark, it's somewhere I've never been, but I'd love to go. I mean, the, the place looks beautiful, and people say the same when they look in Scotland, like, oh my god, the mountains, the hills. But it's lost on people. I think when you live here all your life, but then you kind of it's weird because my partner's dutch so she's from uh netherlands and you know scotland's always been her dream home and i'm kind of like why but then when you see it through her eyes you're like all oh, right i get it you know like you understand so yeah um so <laughs> sometimes you need to go away in order to appreciate what you have at home you know yeah. you see it with new light yeah definitely so. i can imagine so how has that changed your artistic approach being home in, in Denmark then has anything changed from your day-to-day -day routine is it like is it, are you approaching your work differently or how you paint or like when you paint I mean I I, st I control when I paint so right mm -hmm. now uh well that's gonna about that's about to change because I'm taking on a full-time art director role right so right. that's gonna be bound to uh to the to the, the to the policies the of office the, hours and yeah. stuff yeah. yeah but um but right now i control my own hours so mm -hmm. if i want to go and and go to go to the gym hang out with my friends do mm -hmm. that i do that and then i can work in the evening so right. um i have flexible hours and i'm loving mm -hmm. it um <laughs> it's wonderful yeah. you know as long as i get my work done mm -hmm. then i don't really care mm -hmm. how many or when i work it's just right. like I need to make sure that the hours that I put in are 
very um, efficient. Mm-hmm. And that's that's sort of it. And uh, then I make some leeway. So I'm yeah. loving it right now. It's really wonderful. I hope I, I won't miss it too much. No, I know it's one of these things where it's, I'm very lucky with the, the art director I have right now where he is, you know, the same mindset of, you know, as long as your stuff's done, you know, work when you need to, take time, go away, walk, do what you need to do, you know, stuck to your desk for eight hours a day, however you want to break that eight hours up is up to you. Um, and that's what kind of scares me is if I ever had to go back into a position where I was in a studio again, like, you know, then you're bound again for your nine to five or eight to six or whatever it is. Um, you kind of lose that freedom and it does feel a bit weird going back into that that mode of uh working non-stop and only lifting your head every five minutes to look up at your screen it's, it's it's a bit scary but it's also great as well because i know people who have also taken on roles um you know across in america and LA and stuff like that um one of the guys i know who just started working for respawn and uh he's there in england working so you know that's a whole thing where he can now live down there but work for them over in la so it's a whole thing where remote working's a, a, a sense that you know, if you're up for it and that's what you want to do, it's a total option now. Whereas before, you had to be somewhere. You had to be either in an office, in a, in a cubicle, or in, you know, like even when you started Rap Hawk, right, you would be in the office for so many hours per day and same every other company you'd be there. Um, but now with remote working, people can kind of be their own bosses and stuff. And, and uh, um, it seems a great freedom, but there's a, there's a penalty there as well because you have to be strict with your time, right? You have to, like you said, you've got to be efficient. So you may have to make sure that you're not just wasting too much time doing one thing. You have to make sure that like you're taking chunks of work and you're getting it done. So yeah, I can totally understand how that's going to be a thing where you're, you're going to miss that when it's gone. But then of course, do you find that like the structure is something you crave sometimes or like, well, I mean, it's different now, right? Because you've had so much of that. So now you're enjoying the freedom. But then you're going back to that. Will that be something too scary or too unfamiliar? No, uh, it should be fine. I think it's, it's a balance, right? It's a balance. Mm-hmm. Like you say, it's like, um, I always like the analogy of like, if you have total freedom, right? It's kind of like a pool of water that just becomes stale and still. Oh yeah. Uh, but in order for it to have a, a, a direction and a path, you sometimes need, you know, boundaries that can kind of guide yep. that water. Um, so, uh, boundaries are super helpful, super important yep. and really necessary off yeah. to get stuff done so too much freedom is never good and uh and too much boundaries is not never good either so it's it's a fine balance yes agreed yeah especially when i was kind of booted out of university and like you know like oh you've graduated now fantastic fly you know like and you're kind of sat there like okay well, what do i do now <laughs> like how, yeah. how do i structure my day do i get up at this time do i work for this many hours and um i mean it's the most common thing you'll get every conference you go here every question you every second question you'll get is like Esben, how many hours a day do you draw? How many? Tell me exactly. And you're like, well, I mean, some days it's three, some days it's five. I don't know. Like, you know, it's like you've got to be the master of your own time. It's so hard, I think, within this industry, freelance or office work. You've kind of got to be because even people who want to come out of the office work and then do personal work, you've got to be disappointed to do that as well. Because then you all just come home and be like, oh, I can't be bored doing anything, just sit and watch the TV or or eat some crap or you know go out. But um, the people I know who are super dedicated in their personal stuff, like they come home and it's like, right, great, I've got three hours. Let's get to it. Let's do whatever we're going to do. Um, are you finding work, you know, with, like with what you're doing just now, are you finding time for personal work? Is there anything you're doing outside of your stuff for Riot? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am, um, at the moment, I am currently working on an illustration uh, for uh, Huion. Uh, I'm testing cool. one of their tablets. So uh, I'm seeing how much I can crank out of it. I'll see if, if uh, you know, see how I like it compared to, working you know with wakeham and so far it's it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 killing so far it's really doing a great job good so i'm doing that on the side um and then i am uh, working on making a mini course uh for how to lo- how to draw uh faces from imagination so oh, yeah. um i'm working on that on the side too mm-hmm. then i still make sketches for you know the instagram and all like that so there's yeah. there's some things and then you know, I try to keep my overall health and stuff like that. Uh, um, well, um, yeah. so, yeah. so, I mean, is thing. that like, would you say that's almost, and I mean, it's something I've struggled with my whole life. I've been kind of big my whole life and, and struggled with it, you know, and it's something that I've, I've carried on. I mean, I was lucky in my previous career as an engineer, I was very physically active. So the, the weight was kind of kept to manage with that because my job was so physically demanding. Um, but now obviously sitting in front of a computer, total opposite right um so do you think that's almost a i know what you're going to say anyway but for our viewers that your health is a, almost the main component in your artist journey that you need to have a healthy body healthy mind kind of thing yeah it's 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 alpha omega it really mm-hmm. is um 
but uh, it goes up and down. Like mm -hmm. there are things that life throws at you that will send you for you know for curveball, like yep. uh, injuries or mental health or mm -hmm. whatever. And and you know, like I've gone through uh, depression, I think mm -hmm. two or three times now. Same. I had to take a medical leave when I was at Riot. Um, mm -hmm. So you know. Um, those are just things that comes, you know, yeah. uh, and everybody gets hit by it mm -hmm. and there's no shame in it. And, um, and I think the best thing to do and when, when you find yourself in that sort of place is that you can be vocal about it and, and, and acknowledge that it's there and then try, start to, to see what sort of changes you, you, you can make in order mm -hmm. to, um, to to give yourself the best best odds of that man you know so yeah. um so i would say working out or doing some sort of activity definitely helps just my general mood mm -hmm. like um i feel better i hate i, I i'm a lazy fuck like <laughs> i <laughs> i i i am it's so hard to go to the gym sometimes but yeah, yeah. once i'm afterwards once i'm done and all that yeah, yeah i love it it's like it's such a gift it's such a treat so yeah uh right now i'm trying to get it in early in the, in the day mm -hmm. so that i don't have to worry about it because i know that the longer i go um mm -hmm. the more impossible it becomes for me to go to this gym. and it's so stupid but even if it's like four or eight or something mm -hmm. like that i just i just I I I I I uh, I'm very good at tricking myself. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's definitely one of these things. I mean I, I can speak from experience definitely where I know my weight has definitely you know made my mental health suffer. You know, there's definitely even some physical stuff that's happened because of you know my weight and stuff. And it's it's difficult as well because I'm the same as you. I've I've definitely suffered with depression and anxiety, and I think it's just the way I've grew up in the world and the birth of the internet. You know, the age of information where like you know everything all the time. And you know, it's like you can't escape from it. And I feel now as my career goes on, I'm definitely shutting off from it more and more. I'm trying to put social media away. I don't even look at my phone. And I used to, you know, first thing when I woke up, I'd look at my phone, check my messages or notifications. And it's just so toxic. And I think, you know, no like death to America or anything, but like, you know, the guys across there definitely have, have a culture like that where a lot of the guys are very public on social media. It's a very big part of their day especially in Los Angeles, right? I mean, outside of the, the entertainment industry for games, the film industry is there as well. So, I mean, it's, you know, full of, uh, a town full of guys who are trying to make it, try to be in the public eye constantly. And do you feel like that was a proponent to your mental health was the fact that you were in Los Angeles? Was that making it worse, do you think? I think, I I, I definitely think that an environment affects uh, us as people. There's just mm -hmm. no way we go out of out of it. So, your environment also is affecting you. So there are some things that you have within your own control, but then there are also things that is out of your control. Uh -huh. And and so it's for me, it's it's neither or. But I would say definitely when I was in LA, uh -huh. of course LA was was affecting me. Like yeah. there's no doubt. Like mm -hmm. and and LA is a hard it's a hard place where a lot of people are trying to survive the best they can. They're trying to hustle. They're trying to make it. Um, because if you ever lived in LA or been in LA, in LA, it's, it's just that sort of environment. Um, hmm. and it's not, a, it's not the people's fault or anything. It's LA is just a hard city to try to make it in. Um, hmm. it's constantly bossing. So that means that, you know, like there's, you know, the sound of, of, of the cars and everything kind of mm -hmm. around you at all times. There's a lot of people, so there's a lot of life and energy mm -hmm. to it. But but depending, you know, that can also make it hard to, um, that can also make it hard to relax. Mm -hmm. And for me, I come from a little village outside in the middle of nowhere in Denmark. We got right. cows, horses, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's a good environment to sit down kind of, just focus and draw because you're fucking bored and there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I was growing up. I feel your um, pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me coming to LA was, uh, was a shock to the system in many ways, hmm. both a culture shock, uh, but it was also in terms of the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that was really important for me when I lived in LA was uh, going hiking. Um, 
Um, I think if I didn't have that, I think I would have gone down some very dark paths and some mm. very dark roads yep. simply because I was try I would be, tr I would try to find a sense of uh, calm and relaxation, uh, other, other, other ways. Um, right. so I think, you know, for me in LA hikes and, and all that was really a lifesaver. Um, yeah. and then at the end of it, of course, you know, I had to, had to, uh, relocate and I did it and coming mm. back it was kind of like a huge weight kind of being lifted yeah. and sense of relief mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah I think the environment is definitely a, a factor I mean people will talk about you know and, uh, and I've tried my best obviously like I said to not talk about right too much but then it is one of these things where for a lot of people that is a huge goal right that's like the dream you know people are like oh my god i'd give anything to work at riot like or blizzard or mm -hmm. any of those big companies but then it's a lot of pressure right i mean especially if you go in too early or you feel like you're not prepared enough you know you're working you know next day might be two of the biggest artists in the world that are sitting you know a desk apart and you're trying to obviously keep up with them they maybe try to keep up with you also and then you try to keep up with deadlines and you know new things coming out every other day and it's a it's a big deal like i mean i've spoken about it publicly as well and i think that's why people talk about me in a good and bad light where i'm so transparent right i mean i've you know lay on my back in my, in my office at one point and stared at the ceiling and took a picture and be like what am i doing in my life like you know i've been in those positions but i've also you know six months ago posted like oh my god i just got a job with a studio in la this is this is crazy um so the ups and downs are are everywhere but they're so extreme right like the the lows are like ridiculous like dragging all on the floor lows and the highs are like stratosphere stuff like oh my god i can't believe it um i mean how do you you especially as a professional artist for the last 10 years how have you balanced that i mean you've talked about the exercise and stuff like that but is there a mental game going on constantly with you as well when you're drawing and painting uh i think there's a little bit there's a little bit of that i see it a, a lot like um i see it a lot like being an athlete um, mm -hmm. and then I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say that as a grandiose way of, of, of being an artist because I don't think it is, but it's the mm -hmm. sense of you are performing and, um, you know, and the higher you go up in the game, the higher mm -hmm. expectations, the more pressure you're working under and under. So if you're trying to go into the Olympic games or something, mm -hmm. there's a high amount of pressure. And, and it breaks some athletes, but that's the main, that's the thing. If you're an athlete, that's what you sign up for. And, and if you want to work those places, you're also signing up for a uh, higher pressure, you know, than other, that you can find other places. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so it's, it's both part of um, the artists themselves to kind of find a way to balance that and to work under that pressure uh, and find ways to, alleviate and 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 relax again and kind of reset um which can be really hard but i you know it's 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 a shared it's a shared thing because it's not only the artists mm -hmm. i'm not trying to say that it's only the artist like of yeah attitude it's you know like there are also places where you know the pressure becomes too much or a leader mm -hmm. is causing uh, suffering on a team or whatever there's many mm -hmm. scenarios that can happen yeah. Um, but I would say Riot was 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 all in all pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. There was high pressure, mm -hmm. but I also felt there were moments where we could then take a, a briefer and kind of reset. So yep. it was it was fine. Um, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's it's um, I I try to, the best advice I can say is like see it as that there's several amounts of pressure that you're gonna. Uh, pressure situations that you're going to be in throughout your career. Mm -hmm. So it's also finding one that fits to to one's personality and goals and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the worst thing is that if you feel like you're being under a huge amount of pressure, but mm -hmm. but the work or whatever is not meaningful to you, that can be hard because then you're mm -hmm. then you're under a huge amount of pressure, but you don't feel that what you're doing is the right path or it's pushing in the right direction mm -hmm. and then that makes it hard to endure so making sure that uh if you're under high pressure something like that that it's it's helping you in your journey uh, i mm -hmm. think is the most important part so meaning having that meaning behind mm -hmm. is is uh is so important yeah we've talked about it especially when it comes to you know personal projects and, and people getting involved and stuff like that the fact that you know if the passion is lacking it's definitely something that's going to hinder you because when you're pushing maybe 20 hours on a project or you've been 
20 hours in one day sometimes. I mean, it depends how some studios work. But yeah, I mean, it really can be a point where the balance goes out of whack and you're left there feeling a bit burnt out. And I mean, burnout is it's terrible, man. I mean, there's sometimes it can take people, I know, have taken years to recover, like literally years, because it's just they, they have a, you know, a disgust for art or like, you know, they feel like they're done with it and they want to throw it aside. And I was almost at that point until I got my job. And, you know, the fact that... It, it, it sounded stupid, but I had this whole conversation with one of my friends about, she's also a, a 3D artist, but um, when I got my first paycheck, you know, and I had money in the bank and I could pay my bills and I could eat and I could go buy something I wanted, like, it reinvigorated me. And, you know, I even had this discussion with Carlo Ortiz about how artists can almost not really function unless they feel like they're, you know, if you're constantly in that fight or flight mode of like, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make money? Um you know, you can't really be creative in a sense because you have so much worry on your mind. And it is a thing where, you know, it's one of these things where people struggle to think about, oh, well, you know, I have to, you know, struggle or grind for so many years without pay, without compensation. And how am I going to do it? And it's hard, man. Like, I've not got the answers. I can't really tell students now that come to me and ask. I can't say, well, you're going to have to work for free for a long time because sometimes that's just the harsh reality that you're going to have to grind for a few years before you get any kind of semblance of a paycheck. Um, and I've seen people quit over it. I've seen people just leave. And I mean, out of my university, I mean, there's maybe only three or four people working out of like 40 students, you know, and it's it's the way the industry is. It's the same with, with illustration, right? Like it's just, especially like you say now, because the bar is so high, you know, it, it's hard for kids or just young students or people coming in at the door and looking at the, what they've got to achieve and where they start and thinking, holy shit, that's some gap. Like, <laughs> how am I going to fill that? And uh sitting down every day for eight hours to draw is difficult when there's no motivation of reward or pay or any kind of compensation right I mean you went through that right early on like you know you were a student at one point it was difficult so yeah but, and I feel you man like that's that's so hard it's also it depends on the the individual too and what their goals are because it's not just wanting to be an artist it's also like you know like what do they what's the goals for family life like mm. all these sort of things because if you want to be let's say you want to be a working professional artist and you want to have some sort of home or apartment at the age of 25 and then start thinking about kids at that point it's like mm -hmm. man it puts so much pressure underneath your ass right where you're like um you're like fuck i need to make a certain amount in order to make <laughs> that shit come true yeah and i'm trying to go into this industry that is hard and is highly competitive mm -hmm. and and um and i agree with you what you said some there are some situations where you have so much pressure that it's hard to to be a uh, creative and i think that's mm -hmm. that's true i think that if you're in a situation where you're like i need to make money in order for this to run around mm -hmm. i think that you do not make uh your best work in those periods of time because i truly believe that good work comes from a place of uh inner peace if you can say mm -hmm. that like but it comes from a place of like you're not rushing it you're doing it because you love it you're taking mm -hmm. the time um and um and and often when we have you know future uh, expectations or we want we want to be somewhere else than where we are mm -hmm. uh, and we put that in the work and in the situation um it just doesn't come out as well uh, because mm -hmm. we're trying to rush to a place and I, I i've been there too it's i'm not saying that it's wrong to be there i'm just saying that it, it's not where you make the, your best work so yeah it's um it's really tricky i think when i went into becoming an artist i knew that there were going to be a lot of sacrifices um and uh that i would have to pause a few things until i was going to be older mm -hmm. um and that was that was okay with me um mm -hmm. and then i just tried to to focus as much as i could uh in terms of career and then just hunger down and, and really push through and try to say goodbye to my early 20s <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah i mean like i mean i mean it's going to help obviously i mean you know it's no it's no secret right that riot pays like the highest in the whole industry like their, their wages are astronomical but both you know you live in la so that also balances out right but um yeah, like it's one of these things where it's difficult to to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I think, and, and think to yourself, you know, oh, you know, I've only got so many years to go, but like, you know, the family, the whole traditional setup, it is difficult for most guys I know who 
have either chosen like they're not going to have a family because like it's just never going to happen or like they're going to have to make some sacrifices because they wanted to happen and I think at this point what's harder for me now is because I kind of entered the ring at like you know my early 30s you know I was then on the opposite track for you right I'm heading towards 40 like that's my next goal so I'm thinking to myself right you know illustration would be cool concept would be cool but like how much time do I really have to dedicate to that and how much of a work-life balance do I want and you know 3D is great in the sense that you know it, it's no you know it, I always try to walk this fine balance when I talk to students about it and the fact that 3D hard surface is not easy it still is as demanding as other discipline but the difference between becoming a, a 3D hard surface artist and like a, a full-time you know splash artist illustrator I feel like there is a gap there's definitely like way more you have to learn before you know like because with 3D a lot of the programs will do some of the work for you like a part of it will be calculated with the computer <laughs> As opposed to drawing, if you want to draw a person, you're going to need to know anatomy, you know, very well. Structure of the hands, jaws, teeth, eyes, hair, you know, like that's all stuff that really needs to be ingrained in your psyche before you even put pen to paper. And, you know, and then you're talking about like splash art, right? Well, cool. Then you also need to know how to paint and mix paints and color theory. And, you know, a lot of that stuff, I think, goes above and beyond. So, you know, the sacrifice that I'm now making is like, well, not that I'm kind of settling for 3D, but like at this point, I'm still involved in the industry. I'm still getting to be creative. I'm still taking that leap out of my old career and a new one. So that's enough for me. Like I'm just trying to be at peace with being happy with my choice and being happy with the fact that I'm earning money, I'm getting to work in games. It's enough. You know what I mean? And I think it's the same for you now, right? Like Riot was great. It was like you said, you're an athlete, you're running that marathon for so long, but now you're thinking, right, you know, take me slow down just a little bit, like take a bit of my life back find a bit of balance right and and i'm assuming that's what you're kind of where you are just now yeah for sure um that's definitely that's definitely and i love i love that too i, I think that's if i can speak to the, a lot of the artists and a lot of the students out there that you know like they're they're looking towards you know like splash art or something like that and they're like you know that's the goal you know like mm -hmm. If I do not make that, I'm a fucking failure. I'm like, <laughs> slow down, slow down. It's like, yeah. it's good. It's good to have high ambitions and it's good to have these, these things. Right. Um, I'm just, I think, I think it's, it's, I think the problem that I, I sometimes have with it is, um, you know, uh, I think it's a better and more healthy way to be like, Hey, I'm an, I'm a illustrator or I'm an artist and I like to illustrate you know, these things. And if I fit in to a splash situation and I come to a reach a point where I am interested for that team and, mm -hmm. you know, then awesome. I will do it, you know, like mm -hmm. go for it. But I think sometimes too, when you only have identi identified with one thing, you sometimes you become blind to all the other good things that are there. Um, yep. And that's the thing with, sometimes with with young artists and when they're like oh riot or blizzard it's like yeah riot and blizzards are really are really cool some mm -hmm. cool good places to to work not no no shade there mm -hmm. uh, but you have to remember too that there's so many other cool things that are <laughs> that are happening and yeah and you cannot close yourself to all of that stuff either and you can learn some things there that you cannot learn in, in those big studios yeah and maybe uh maybe that's what you need and then as you also say, you know, like as you get older too, your priorities change and mm -hmm. your values change and you're like, huh, okay, well, maybe I'm not willing to sacrifice everything for my career. Like, yeah. hey, am I really willing to say, like for me, I'm not willing to sacrifice the opportunity of, of starting a family for a career. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. as, as, as wonderful as having a good career and everything can be, mm -hmm. um, there is no doubt in my mind that a family for for me mm -hmm. uh carries more value um yep. and it, it's too big of a sacrifice to give up on so i'm like mm -hmm. i'm okay with making a bit of compromise mm -hmm. on my career um mm -hmm. in order to to be more fulfilled on another end so it's it's a constant balance yes some would say, uh, I know people who have had kids or artists will say that their greatest work of art was their kids so i mean <laughs> one of these things you know you know it's one because i think even for me like one of the the things i feared most of my life was 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 death and and not being here at one point and uh you know we talked about i always wanted to I'll leave a legacy behind i think this podcast is part of it but um you know my partner always explained to me well you know your kids 
are the greatest legacy you'll ever leave. Those are the people who will carry on your teachings and things that you've done. That's how it used to work in the old world. That's how it works now. Um, and I kind of came with that assumption, like, oh yeah, you're right. What you're saying, like, yeah, that is a thing that because you know, kids for me were a financial drain, were responsibility on top of everything I was doing just now. Where they've also got my career to juggle, and I'm so far at the beginning of it. And uh, yeah, like you said, you miss a lot of stuff. Even the fact we were talking about, like you work in IO now, you know, like, you know, there's some guys who would be illustrators starting out and be like, oh, you know, IO, you know, it's not Riot, it's not Blizzard, it's not whatever, but still a great studio, still an amazing place to work, you know, and uh, even the place I'm working now, it's not, you know, although it's a small studio, you know, it's not something that's been established for 30, 40 years. It's, it's, it's a smaller take, it's only five or six of us, but I love what I do and I get well compensated for it. So I'm happy and that's better you know where I was at the start of the pandemic where I was jobless you know penniless you know prospectless and <laughs> struggling to get up in the morning to do stuff and uh yeah like it is it, it, one of all these things you talk about is balance right it's trying to find your balance again in, in the world so and like you said family is part of that so yeah. definitely there is this um I had a teacher back in school I called Peter Chen and uh he 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 taught me this this thing that I always uh, I always liked Mm -hmm. um but he said it's the four stove uh four stove uh conundrum i guess is what we can call it okay <laughs> <laughs> so essentially imagine there being four stoves so we have a stove you know just like when you're cooking so yep. you, have, you have four of them and uh the thing is you can leave all four on but if mm -hmm. you leave all four on you can only heat them up to about 80 percent heat right so right. so if you leave all four on you know all of them run at around 80 percent so mm -hmm. you know they will never reach you know you never feel 100 percent fulfilled on all four but mm -hmm. but you'll have a good base yeah if you so if you want to be successful in mm -hmm. one of them you need to turn one of them off mm -hmm. and uh, if you want to be hyper successful you need to turn two of them off um so that's that's the thing where it's mm -hmm. like you know like eat those four plates uh, represent family Family, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, family. The other one I would say, was, uh, if I remember, was friends, mm -hmm. uh, friend, friends in social life. Uh, the other one is health, and then the mm -hmm. last one is career. So those right. are the four, the four ones. And and um, and uh, the thing, the the danger sometimes with with running and being hyper successful on one is that you mm -hmm. only have another one to lean on. Right. So in case of something happen happening or whatever. Mm -hmm. You are running a risk of saying, "Hey, can can everything <laughs> run on <laughs> this one thing?" You know, yeah. Um, so, so it's it's a balance, and I think I truly believe that throughout our lives, you you turn it up and down. You try to find your your balance within it. Um, so, so, but I, I think that was that's essentially what I've I've done is I've been able to say like, okay, I'm turning some others back on and i'm okay with this one going down a little bit um yeah so yeah definitely i mean one of the things i would probably say or, or that i've kind of started to wa want to ask artists now is that if 21 year old esmin was standing in front of you you know looking back now about where you were back then and you were standing in front of him what would you tell him to make his life better what do you think would be your key message to him um knowing what you know now and having had the career you've had um what would i say just uh have fun and uh and put on some dub effects <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> i i like that, that that seemed to work to, for for 20 year old me it's just like yeah. listening to to music and then just like keep my head down yeah. and i was loving it like i was really loving it yeah. um and uh and i think that that's it's 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 an important part because if we mm -hmm. don't like i think that's coming back to the expectations and pressure mm -hmm. too because if you're not enjoying it uh that's when it it really it really uh becomes hard uh, mm -hmm. and it's hard to kind of keep going and it's so if you if there's not aspects that you have fun with or enjoying mm -hmm. it starts to go sour uh, and if you and if you do not have fun at least mm -hmm. if you have meaning like like yeah. you, you know why you're doing it mm -hmm. so 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 that would i would say that that's maybe the main thing is to try to have fun with it you know and mm -hmm. 
because it alleviates the pressure of what we want to have uh, outcomes from it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Do you feel that there's meaning still behind your art? Do you feel like there's a reason you continue to be an artist? Is there still a love for it there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes more than others, but uh, at the core, it's still storytelling. It's still communicating emotions. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an incredible skill. Um, I think it's a, a skill to communicate feelings uh, from yep. pictures. And uh, I love that. I still do. Um, mm -hmm. So... I think now it's coming to a point where it's more like, hey, what do I want to communicate? You know, it's not so much about learning the skills and everything, but it's more mm -hmm. about what do you want to see as a say. person? Yeah. 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 Is that a key for maybe like in the future, there might be some kind of graphic novel or storytelling that you're doing on your own? Or like, is that something that you've thought about, like creating your own stories? I would love to do a Kickstarter at one point. Uh, I have, <laughs> um, I have, uh, uh, when I was 18, I lost my brother and uh it happened very fast and everything and uh i would love to create uh i've already started and i've been sitting on this story for a long time mm -hmm. um and i would love to wrap it up i would love to finish it and mm -hmm. make it into a kickstarter at some point cool. and uh, and then see how it does uh, but yeah. essentially it goes into you know how it is when you're dealing with 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 grief and the five mm -hmm. stages of grief and um and hopefully it can it can help share a light on the experience of mm -hmm. uh of that and then also help other people that might be in a similar situation mm -hmm. um relate and feel like they're not alone with it so i hope it can can do some good once mm -hmm. it's done yeah uh, but uh but uh that's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be a, a behemoth because it's it's going into a lot of 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 heavy emotions and memories on my end too. Yeah, well, I'm sure I'm sure whatever he is right now, I'm sure he's very proud of uh, the man you've become and, and everything you've done with your life has been so. Um, I'm sure that the fact that you're sharing his story that will make him even prouder. So definitely a, a thing to look forward to so um i think it's a good place to end it i think it's a good place to chip off but um let you get back to your work but yeah i mean thanks to you guys who have stuck around this long um i hope for whatever you've been listening and you know it's helped in some way that you guys have uh, appreciated the talk and again thanks desmond for coming on and talking um i hope you enjoyed it yeah for sure and thank you gordon i really appreciate it uh awesome uh, awesome conversation and and <laughs> questions and everything i hope uh, i hope you keep doing this and keep pressuring and uh yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then you know maybe in a year or two we'll have another sync up um, yeah so. I would love that yeah it's always great when, when guests come back and they want to do another episode um, um, definitely enjoy just um, sitting and chatting you know about just life in general now I think like you said when I first started this it was all about you know how to draw and how to do this and how to get jobs but you know as I get older as well I want to talk about other things deeper things you know within us and I think it's really great that we can sit sometimes and just have a human conversation because especially over the last two years that's been something we've all been vastly missing and I know I get emails from people from students who say that like the podcast is one thing that's basically keeping them going because you know um I'm only one of like four podcasts or something so like if I'm not doing it it's one less there's only three so yeah I'm glad that I get to contribute in some way so yeah um yeah again thanks Desmond thanks to you guys listening um check us out on all the platforms we'll be on many uh Spotify Google Podcasts uh, iTunes we're all over the place and um yeah on podcasts on YouTube as well so we do the video version there as well if you want to see Desmond's pretty face and minds as well um, you can head over there and check us out and uh yeah uh, that's really it guys thanks again for listening and uh, we'll see you all there bye